Hello friends, this is David Bose, and I hope you're all having a great day. Really turned out pretty here in Texas the last couple days. We had some sunshine after a long rain. Rained for about a month, it seemed like. Well friends, I want to get right into this video today. Just before I push this little red button, and I had been kind of having some thoughts just for a few minutes as, as I got some coffee and walked into the living room and and I thought well I better go ahead and, and record these thoughts because this is kind of the way I think it is when I first started with all of this information I think I knew when I was a kid that everything that we see around us is absolute horse crap I never trusted the government when I was just a little kid I never trusted them I don't know what other children feel I don't know some kids somehow get brainwashed into believing everything around them. They Somehow they just think that all the churches must be... I think it's because of the way I was raised. Jehovah's Witnesses are a peculiar lot. Even though they're completely wrong about everything they believe. And of course, everything that they believe is completely made up by some guy that sat down and wrote a book. And it's crazy. Once you grow up, actually, start using your own mind and look back, you realize this is crazy. I don't know why my family believed it why we all just sat and listened to this horseshit for so long but that's the way it is i think with just about everybody i doesn't i don't think it matters i mean what brand of horseshit you prescribe i think that everything that you can believe on in this world if it doesn't come naturally to you when you're born, I don't, I don't think it's real. I think that we're really being fed a line of horse crap. Let me give you an example. Someone had sent me a little clip, a little video clip they wanted me to watch. And so I don't spend a lot of time on YouTube watching people's clips. But from time to time, I'll see something interesting and I clicked on it. And it was a guy who claimed that this radiation scare, nuclear waste and radiation and nuclear fallout and all of this stuff was a big hoax. Well, I have known that in my heart for a long time. It's pretty obvious to see. Just look at the politics of it. Imagine a little country, North Korea. I mean, this is just a little dinky country. And somehow or another, they've got nuclear weapons. Well, they can't feed themselves. For how long now? 50, 60 years we've been going along pretending that this little country can threaten the entire world. And what purpose does it serve? Well, remember, people who, who want to sell you a product, they have to have advertisement. They have to have a way to get the people to go and buy the stuff. Now, when it comes to the government, they need the people to be ignorant and they need us to believe that it's important that we go and vote for what they want us to do. This is why it's so important. If you look in every town in America, you'll see, I don't care if the town has got 200 people. They've got a school, probably even a high school with a gym, uh, you know, an auditorium. I mean, huge school that... Thousands of kids could go to, but there's only 200 people living in that town. And it's brand new. Brand new parking lot, gymnasium, auditorium, cafeterias, everything. And they're what? There's 20 kids going there. And then you get a bunch of kids that drive out to the school that are from town. So maybe there's 200 kids going there. But these are people carpooling from the, the closest major town. Why are we so... It's beyond that we want education. And that's the word they use. We need education. But of course, a long time ago, we all should have been aware of the fact that it's really not education. He said, well, of course it is, Dave. They're learning math and science and history. Well, as many of you probably know, or maybe you don't know, they're not really learning history. If they were, they'd know all about the Sumerian tablets, which is our history. And nobody's letting them know anything about that or the Nagamati Library that really influences what we actually believe about the establishing of Christianity that 
We're not going to go back and try to teach people what's really going on. He said, yeah, well, that's because of the right-wing conspiracists who don't want anybody to know that the earth evolved from a polywog. No, friends, the same people that are brainwashing us with religion are the same ones that are brainwashing us with science. Something doesn't come from nothing. The universe didn't evolve from a polywog, and if it did, there's no way we could possibly know that. Somehow they've got you believing that these scientists are so smart that they know where the universe came from. Somehow they know those are little, those are little stars out there, and they're so many hundreds of light years away. What's a light year, Dave? Well, you start with how fast light travels per second, and then you figure out how long it would take for it to go a year, and if several hundred years, then it's, it's how fast light would travel there. So somehow we know that light travels at 186,000 miles per second. Don't doubt us. We know. We've also gone to the moon, and we've got pictures of it, and we photoshopped in the Earth so that we got an Earth rise in there. It's all photoshopped, but don't doubt that we didn't actually go. And of course, all of this was done somewhere in a Hollywood studio. And this has been proven. They've lost all the original film. Somehow, miraculously lost it now because we want to look at it and examine it. And they're like, oh, well, we don't have it anymore. Sorry. It is beyond doubt now. This information is coming out on YouTube. Of course, they don't like that. They're trying to shut free speech down. They don't want you to know that perhaps some of these things were false flags that happened to us. Maybe uh, Pearl Harbor was just a false flag to get us into World War II. Perhaps 9-11 was just a false flag to get us into the Afghanistan war so we could control the poppies and the oil lines. You see, a lot of us kind of know this now, but we're still saying, ah, oh, it's not important. It's not, what are, we, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So we just keep voting politicians in, and we think, well, they don't know. It's just, a, it's just our government's gotten so monstrous that we can't stop it, and we're just going to have to all live under this tyranny of information. So this guy that worked, I think, in Richland, Washington, where they got this huge... Uh, nuclear waste uh, project thing. I don't know exactly what's going on there. They started making weapons-grade uranium at that site. And we're here in America, we're the ones that started doing this. And we got enough of this weapons-grade uranium to supply all of the nuclear bombs that we're ever going to need in our lifetimes and forever and ever into the future. And this guy was saying that originally this uranium was worth way more than gold. He was one of the original people that worked on this, making this weapons-grade uranium. And he knows beyond a doubt that there were like 200 people that worked there, or I don't know how many people it was exactly, can't remember. But those individuals that worked there knew full well that it was a big scam that this uranium was not volatile, Touching it, exposing yourself to it, did not harm you at all. It's a big farce. He said that there was this pool. Him and his friends that worked there would go swimming in the water. It was supposed to be radioactive water. They'd swim in it. And he said they would even drink it. It's completely harmless. He goes on to describe in detail the hoax that has been played upon us. And he explains why. And actually, I don't think he knows completely why. I think his idea was that it was so much money involved that it was lucrative and there was a corporation involved and they lobbied Congress and, you know, they told this big lie. He says that people in Congress know this. Up to the president, they know all of this information. They know that nuclear fallout is not dangerous. If you go to Chernobyl today, it's supposed to have been unlivable near and around Chernobyl for 10,000 years. And yet, if you go there today, there are people living there. There are vegetables and animals. Wildlife is thriving there. There is no two-headed serpents or weird deformities or anything. They're just all thriving there. Fruit trees and gardens and everything is going on there just a few years after the accident. There is no chain reaction that they've been telling us he said that they had told everybody that something like so many grams of this uranium, I don't know how much, uh, would blow up the whole world if you had so much of this. And he says it's completely untrue. 
that you are not going to blow up the whole world. And then if you do have a bomb that goes off, it simply is like an ordinary bomb that blows things up and destroys things. It, you can go back in after the blast. He says we're being lied to. There is no radioactive danger. Now, of course, just because I say that doesn't make a lot of you believe me. But I just want you to at least think about the possibility that we've been lied to about one simple thing. Nuclear danger. Nuclear power plants. Imagine, why in the world, if that is so dangerous, these nuclear power plants, that they're putting them all around the world like little ticking time bombs that could completely destroy the entire world. What's going on in Fukushima? We were told that the world was in danger, and yet we're still eating the fish out of the oceans, and we're not having anybody come back and say, oh, people are dying. Over there in Tokyo, nobody's dying. Nobody's got two heads. There doesn't seem to be an epidemic of genetic problems. It's just a big lie. And again, even if you do not believe that it could possibly be a big hoax, at least ask yourself one thing. What if it is? Do you see how easy it would be for our government to lie to us about things like that? And yes, friends, everything we've been told is probably a lie. So is the Earth a round ball spinning through space at millions of trillions of miles an hour? Here's the answer, friends. We don't know. We don't know because we haven't seen it for ourselves. We have no corroboration. And we cannot believe what these corporations and the elite who are trying to keep us ignorant, we cannot believe anything they say. They've been telling us that Kim Jong-un and Kim Jong-il were going to wipe the face of the earth off with their nuclear weapons and we had to dig deep into our pockets, make more schools and build more military weapons because you never know what these crazy people like Kim Jong-un is going to do. Well, they siphoned trillions of dollars off of all of us. You have no accountability. Where did all that money go? A trillion dollars. Where did it go? Well, we know for one that they spent a billion dollars on an airplane that only cost 10 million. And that's just what they're saying. We know that this is happening on everything they're doing. There is no accountability. We don't know where the money's going. You can go to the toll booth, I-95, Interstate 95, going from Florida up to New York City, and you pay your $15 at every booth, and you say, well, hundreds and hundreds of cars going through every minute, giving them $15 at a whack. It's billions of dollars. Well, the government says it's being spent wisely. Really? Well, there's that much money involved, friends, do you think it's being somehow spent wisely when we don't know where the money's going? And if they do tell us, they only tell us stuff like, well, 20% was used on roads and 10% was kicked back to this other fund and 30% and goes to the state. And What's that tell you? They don't tell you where these dollars were used, what they purchased, who they went to, and what pockets they went to. I hear so many people under the delusion that somehow or another we should fight about whether or not we should be uh, socialists or capitalists or communists or, or some other silly new idea. I'm telling you, friends, for thousands of years, government has been a hoax. It doesn't matter whether it's capitalism or communism or socialism. The elite are still running the show. You're not going to have the right to live and breathe and do as you please, no matter what kind of government you live under. You say, well, that's not true, Dave. Here we have a freedom of speech. No, we don't. You have the freedom to speak what they tell you. You cannot go out and start talking about political things that they don't like. You can get away with it for a little while, and then they'll start shutting down your YouTube. Friends, I know I've just been denied again monetization on my videos. And I really don't have any idea what I'm going to do, except continue to rely on the fact that I am unwilling to bend and take off running with my tail between my legs, just like we've always done for thousands of years. And thank goodness that some of us today are standing up and saying, no, I think that this is a battle for the truth. And when the truth starts being unveiled to the point where 
I mean, it's already happening. But it, there, there, there's coming a point when videos like this one here that, that basically seems scurrilous and, and, and how terrible this guy is promoting all these conspiracies. He's a ridiculous, crazy dude. Well, we got to get him off the net. There's going to come a time very, very soon when you're going to say, why didn't we listen to him before? Why didn't we believe this? Why did we not open our eyes? They have every reason to lie to you. They need money, 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 money. Remember that old commercial? Libby, Libby, Libby on the label, label, label. You will like it, like it, like it on the table, table, table. See, that was a good little jingle so that you would go out and buy Libby products. Well, friends, you're being lied to hook, line, and sinker every day you get on your television and you spend hours watching this all bushy-tailed and starry-eyed just listening to this propaganda. Oh, oh my goodness. Some people died in some state that I've never lived in and it's terrible and the whole world's coming to an end because these are people that are the elite. And we've got to be all worried about that. Who cares that hundreds and hundreds of Minorities were murdered and killed in the inner cities all across this nation. Nobody gives a flying leap. Nor do they care that they have shut down the monetization on my YouTube channel and are trying to intimidate me so that I won't say the things that they don't want me to say and they don't want you to hear. Because I'm a terrible conspiracist like Alex Jones and that's just something we can't tolerate. See, that's not free speech. But they're getting away with it. You say, well, Dave, I agree that we can't let people like Alex Jones go around saying stuff like that. There's always been a rule. You can't cry fire in a crowded room. Well, you know, we're human beings. We can figure it out. Anything that could lead to someone's harm, we should not tolerate people running around hurting other people. But free speech... I should be allowed to tell you what I feel. I should be allowed to tell you the true history of our world. You see, all of that is bad enough. And most of you probably don't even agree with anything I just said. But I ask you at least to think about why you believe that all these scientists are telling you the truth. That the news agencies are telling you the truth. That somehow or another we need trillions of dollars in the military and we need police on every corner. Well, Dave, we've got to have security. You know, there's people shooting other people and there's people doing bad things. We've got to have security to be safe. Friends, all of these so-called disasters and riots, most of it is just false flag. They're setting you up. It is to their interest. If they make you believe that there's a threat somewhere, then they can get you to go and vote for more martial law, more of your freedoms going away, and uh, they can keep you strung out on some stupid, stupid thing like, oh, can men dress up like girls and go into little girls' bathrooms? And uh, You know, we, we're going to debate that to death. Meanwhile, the elite in this country are sucking you dry and keeping you down in these little basically in concentration camps in every little city and you go to work every day and you work for them you don't get any of the benefits and they're saying oh you shouldn't be able to to get any kind of health care or you know have a living wage because that's just that's impossible we just we've never been able to figure that one out <laughs> it's just impossible to have a government that's fair dave i mean i mean what do you want from us right my gosh, you know, what do you want to be a socialist, you idiot? No, I don't want any of your laws or regulations running my life. I want a lot less government. But we definitely do not need the government rounding up all of our children at 7 o'clock in the morning and putting on a bus and taking them to a place where they indoctrinate them for 8 hours every day and teach them to become good little slaves. You know, a bunch of information. Well, we need math, right? So that they can man the, the, the cash register at Walmart so they can sell you stuff. So that, you know, in other words, we're building our own prison. You're going to school to learn how to do stuff that you don't need to do. If we lived in this world naturally, we would build our own homes. 
with our own hands. We'd get out in the streets every night and have a big barbecue with our families and friends and we'd, we'd dance and we'd sing and we'd be so happy. There wouldn't be any sick among us. We wouldn't be depressed. We wouldn't be listening to their lives. We wouldn't have any wars. You say, oh, I love my life, Dave. Well, you're living your little luxurious life in your 2018 4x4 GMC truck with quad tires and chrome rims and tinted glass, cruise control, all of this that you love so much. And yes, it's a, it's a great little gift. Is it worth all the people that are lying around in mental hospitals, in prisons, in third world countries, lying in the inner cities, standing there with a whiskey bottle and a paper bag, drunk off their ass, they can't even you know, waddle down the street, on heroin and cocaine and all these things that the elite is peddling into their communities, getting them to be drug pushers, promising them a little bit of money and then sending them to prison. And then when they get out, they put them on mental health drugs and then they control their lives until they die. You and I pay with our taxes to pay the Social Security because they're disabled now. And we pay them from cradle to grave and what do we pay for? Them to be mentally ill walking around in our streets. Go to California and you'll find there's only two kinds of people. The really, really rich or those that are on social securities or disability wandering and, 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 and you know, trash all over the place living in, in squalor. And of course, there's a few people in the middle that are trying to work at restaurants and they're working three jobs to rent some little apartment just to get by. They don't have a good life. They don't have health insurance. And look, to me, that's fine because I think the whole entire health industry is a, big, is a big scam. But if you don't know that and you don't know how to eat and you're going down to the store and you're eating all this uh, hydrogenated oil and all of this meat. By the way, friends, you know, as most of you know, I was a vegetarian for 11 years. And then I started getting ill and I had to stop that. And I did some more research and found that there's a lot of things that we don't know or that I didn't know about health. But one of the things that vegetarians talk about all the time is a supposed crisis that we're having in the world because people are eating too much beef, too much meat. And they're saying what's happening is they're cutting down all the trees, cutting them all down. And they're growing corn so they can feed the cows so that we can eat the cows. I don't know if most of you know this. A lot of you live in the cities. You don't, you don't get out much and maybe you don't know. But here in Texas, I guarantee, and this is the same thing that it was in New Mexico when I was there. It's happening in Idaho, in Iowa, Indiana, I and mean, every state as far as I know. I did a video a while back where I told you that there was this airplane going across the road spraying some kind of deadly poison and I thought he was a crop duster but he was spraying it all over the trees here in Texas. Well I had feared at the time because obviously there's no reason to spray the trees unless you're trying to kill all the trees and I was thinking man if he's got enough poison that he's dumping on these trees and killing all the trees then what is it doing to the animals the deer the rabbits the bugs everything under the trees so, you know, somebody had told me after I made that video, yeah, that's what they're doing. They're, they're killing all of the, the brush and the trees so they can go in there and burn it. And then they're going to grow corn. Well, sure enough, it wasn't just a couple of few months. And I drove back through there and all those trees are dead. Miles of trees just dead. And I started taking note of the fact that little by little by little, all of this area around here, which is very remote and mostly just brush and trees everywhere, they're clearing it. They're clearing it all. Thousands and thousands of acres. And why? Because more and more people need more and more meat. There is so many cows in this area here in Texas. And it's not just Texas, friends. It's all across the Midwest and who, who knows where. But there are so many cows that you, it's ruining the entire state of Texas. If it isn't oil wells pumping oil everywhere, every so many feet you walk into an oil well, it's making this reek, reek, reek noise, you know. 
And it's sucking and pumping all the oil out of the ground. And they're spilling oil all over the ground. Or there's windmills. Every few miles, you see thousands of these windmills. They're kind of interesting looking, but, you know, come on. They're just everywhere. But the other thing is the cows. You can't go anywhere that's just natural land where somebody doesn't own that land, some farmer or rancher, and, and there's just all this cattle on all this land. And you say, well, what's wrong with that, Dave? Well, because they didn't even have that many buffalo in this country when we first came over here, naturally, and deer and stuff. So there's less and less deer, there's no buffalo, and all we've got is all of these domesticated animals that we're eating. And here's what's happening. Per square mile, there is way more cows than what we should have out here. We've got, you can't walk 10 feet without stepping in cow crap. Anywhere in Texas, as far as I know. Now, maybe in the eastern part of Texas, it's not so bad. But most of West Texas and, and the Middle West, South Texas, cow crap everywhere. You step in it everywhere. It, it was raining here for a few days and, the, and it was just like swampy horse crap everywhere you couldn't even it stunk so bad and i was out in the middle of nowhere and the whole the whole area just stunk like cows you could stand 50 miles from a town out in the rolling hills of texas and you can smell the stench of cows and you can hear them mooing and 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 just the crap all around you it is really a crisis but nobody sees it there's another one of these little crises that that nobody sees now does that mean that humans shouldn't eat meat? That's nothing to do with it. The problem is, is that the more people grow and have children, the more slaves these individuals that these elites can have. They herd us into these little cities. They get us to run their power plants and their factories and they build all of this stuff for them. That's why they're having the illegal immigration going into California. Because the elite there, they need people to come in and clean their homes and do their gardening and they want cheap labor. Basically, they need slaves is what they need. That's what these people are. I guarantee the Democratic Party, after they get all the illegals in here, they're going to let them vote simply because that's going to give them more power. But they're not going to give them citizenship. They don't want them to have that. They'll make a compromise and say, let's let them vote, but they don't get citizenship or something. Whatever they end up doing, it's only going to benefit the corporations and the elite it will not benefit you or i or even the people in guatemala or salvador because the elite are lying to us on every level and until democrats and republicans stop this charade and say we're not going to vote for democrats or republicans stand up and we say we've had enough i'm sitting there watching glenn beck articulate his view on what's going on and he's saying some pretty interesting things. Almost correct. He sees what's going on on the left and one on the right. And he says that the, the left is crazy and the right is this. And he's got, you know, he's got some perspective except one little problem. He cannot see that these individuals, the elite who run the world are the problem. He never points out the problem. Nobody ever says well it's this one family this one little elite group that own us and that are destroying us nobody can see it well i don't understand why uh there's always wars uh because we're being goaded by these two parties now glenn beck says what are we going to do i mean these two parties are going to have a civil war there's nothing we can do how about we just open up the truth like a can of worms and let the people have it that we're being lied to we don't have to go to war the Democrats are lying to you, friends. I know you hate Donald Trump. Probably as much as the, the Republicans hate Nancy Pelosi. But friends, what's the point? You hate them, they hate you, but it's all propaganda. That's not me and it's not you. We the people don't hate each other and should not hate each other. They're just pitting us against each other. It's all a big lie. Okay. So... I've kind of given you some information on different subjects, whether it's nuclear radioactive waste 
or the fact that we're literally destroying all of the forests and trees everywhere so that there can be more cow shit per square inch all over the earth. It's just stinking up the whole world. And I've given you information about the schools and the government and all this stuff, science that we're being lied to about. Once again, if you don't believe that any of the things that I'm saying is true, at least entertain the possibility that we, the little peons, do not know the truth. Even if what I told you is not the truth. You can at least understand that these elite, these corporate entities, don't want you to know everything. So even if you can just kind of grasp that there are lots of things that we're being lied to about, and it's not to our advantage, then you're getting closer. Now I want to steer this to the real problem. If that isn't all problem enough, that's the end result of our ignorance, of our stupidity, of our gullibleness. We're not this stupid. We're in a trance. We've got to wake up. They've got us in a trance. We're in a stupor. We just somehow wake up. I and mean, think about it. It's not our fault. We wake up in the mornings. And you stagger out into the living room and what? With your phone probably that you slept with. You probably woke up in the middle of the night and answered some text messages or whatever. You wake up, you got to turn on the news or some program or some music. You say, oh, I don't watch the news, Dave. I just plug in the music right into my ear and I just listen to Beyonce, you know, whatever. Really? That's propaganda. All of it. But Dave, what would we do? You know, if we didn't have our music and our cars and... You know, in our jobs, 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 jobs. That's all we need is jobs. What about happiness? What about a sense of security? You get a job and they can fire you and then, you know, you get sick and you just go die. I mean, where, is, where did mankind ever finally in this 21st century get to a place where we're, we're secure, we're happy, we're living longer? We're not living longer. People are getting diseases now they've never heard of in the ancient times. Things are getting worse. There's more wars. There's more people. You say, oh, well, it's the safest time in world history to be alive, you know. Okay, maybe, but we're under this threat, a different kind of threat. It's constantly, oh, maybe somebody's going to shoot up the store downtown or the theater or, oh, we got to have police stop our cars and just check us. Stop and search, right? Because we might be bad guys. While we're in a crisis, this is martial law, and this is not what I want. I think that all the wars that ever were, were created by the elite. They financed them, they propagated them, they create division, they pay people to riot, they confuse the issues from things that are important to things that we don't even care about, and they just sit there and, and, and for years on end, we argue about the same stupid little things. Whether or not we should have more military so we can be safe, or more police, or more prisons. Never once do we ever allow the argument to be made that perhaps we wouldn't need prisons. We weren't being rounded up into these little inner cities where there's nothing to do, no money, no way to pay your rent, basically. You're on welfare. You can't get a job. You got police harassing you. Your mother's in, in, in jail. Your father's been murdered. Or your brother's in a gang. And they're trying to get you to sell drugs so you can make a little money. That's all you've ever known. And then you go to prison and you're in and out of prison. And gangs. And then you're on mental health drugs. This is not your fault. This is exactly the world they want. And meanwhile, in the suburbs, there's all of this, well, uh, it's their own fault and we're out here working hard and we've got a car and, and, and your life is great. Oh, I love my life. I'm helping people. What do you do? Oh, I'm a nurse and I give people medications and, you know, it's helping them. It is a scam. You get up and you look at the television and they're telling you to buy these drugs, buy these drugs, buy these drugs with big happy little smiles on their faces, running through fields with daisies, with snails and puppy dog tails, and little girls with ponytails, and you know, blowing little kisses to little boys, and, and you know, grandpas smiling with their grandchildren, right? It's just propaganda. Oh, buy these drugs. Meanwhile, the last half of the commercial is about all the things that this drug is going to do to kill you. 
If you have any signs of any of these things, it's probably killing you. Don't take it anymore. So these drugs are out for a year or so, and then the lawyers come along, and they sue the drug companies, and they make more money. We've got to pay for all of this. Who's paying, for, who's paying the lawyers? You are. In your taxes. You're paying for the drugs, you're paying for the lawyers, you're paying for the people who are dying, and then you're going down with a big smile on your face to the local clinic administering this dose of poison. I know you could say, oh, well, Dave, you don't know that. It's probably helping people. Oh, I think it's helping people. I knew somebody, my aunt was helped with some drugs once. Well, friends, can you imagine what your aunt would have been if she hadn't have taken those drugs and ruined her liver. She ended up dying, what, 10 years later, right, of liver disease or some other thing? Well, we, we cured her, her lung cancer. Really? Yeah, we burned that lung right out with radiation therapy. Cured the cancer. Well, yeah, but now she's got no lung and she can't breathe. And now she's on medications that's ruining her liver. Do you think that's a quality life? Well, Dave, what do you suggest? Well. How about we go back to the days where people didn't get cancer? Why is it that people getting cancer? Because they're giving it to you. Our society is giving us cancer. And they know how these diseases get into us, but they say they don't know. Somehow they never come up with any cures. They just give us these drugs. And so, so, so at the very, very best, these doctors are what? Putting you in a hospital taking all of your money, draining your accounts, taking all of our taxes for this Obamacare, ruining the world. We're in debt up to our Adam's apple. We're never going to get out of debt so that what? People can live a couple of extra years longer? If, if Maybe. Probably people are living less. It's not working. This isn't right. It's a big fraud, friends. So I'm going to take a big swerve in the road here now. What I was thinking I was going to talk about, but when I turned this little red button on, was how we're being deceived by religion. So I think I'll just talk for the next few minutes about that to kind of round out this video to a conclusion. Well, I want you to know just how deeply you're being deceived. Go to your Bible. We've had a discussion now. I did six videos in a series and I'm still, I haven't done the seventh and I'm going to get to that. But in that series, we learned, friends, that some very odd things that we were not aware of is going on. One, we thought God was a bearded man in the sky. Oh, no, I didn't, Dave. I never did think that. Really? So what did you think God was? When you got on your knees and you started saying audible English words into the air, did you think somehow or another that there was a man of some kind, a being, did you picture him as a father in some way? Do you picture Jesus as a man with the beard and some long hair? Did you pray to Jesus? That's a man. And his father, that's a man. And you used audible English and you begged and pleaded for his forgiveness. And you, you know, is that what the New Testament is about? Well, what we've seen from digging up these ancient Sumerian tablets and from encoding the Egyptian hieroglyphs on the pyramid walls in the last few years is that we've been completely deceived. Jesus uses a statement in the New Testament all the time. My Father in heaven, my Father in heaven. Pray to thy Father in heaven this way. Father in heaven, the Father in heaven. You say, well, look, Dave, you know, if you're saying there's no Father in heaven, then you're just you know, saying something that's not in the Scriptures. Well, here's why we don't comprehend our Bibles. Go back to the Greek and you see it's pater oranos, Father Heaven. And we're not told, but there was a Mother Earth as well. There were gods in the sea, there were gods of the mountains, there were gods of the underworld, there were spirits in the trees and the rocks. They had a whole pantheon of beings, which originally none of that had anything to do with a bearded man or actual people. They had an original story about the creation of the world that did not include creating the world from nothing. It was simply a parable of how 
heaven, which is a male principle, and earth, a female principle, get together and produce rivers and trees and mountains. And over aeons of time, one thing begets another, begets another, begets another, until it comes down to this thing they call the logos or the mind or consciousness. And so it was trying to explain to us how we, conscious beings, came into this world. How we are the sons of the gods. And these gods, that's just an English word. It never did mean these bearded men or bearded women or whatever. But the word God, I mean, there were different gods. Like I said, one of the New Testament god is Theos or Iranos. It uses both. Because they were both Greek gods. Theos is another spelling for Zeus. And it was just the thunder sky god who received his kingdom from his father, Uranus. And it's the same story that's in the Bible. The Bible uses Theos, it uses Uranus, and it's talking about Father Heaven. And it's talking about the birth of the Logos who was with the Father Heaven from the beginning and was finally born and all things came into existence through the word, through the expression, the mind, through consciousness. And that this deity or this divine means light. That's what it means. And it literally says in the New Testament that the divine being is light. It's not saying he's like light or he's part of light or he's, he's made of light. It says he is light and it says he's spirit. And spirit means an invisible active power. It does not mean a bearded man. And the scripture says that his kingdom is going to come as the light that shines from the east, shines all the way under the west. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. It is the coming of the light of the sun. It's not to be taken literally. When it says every eye shall see him, will come on the clouds of heaven. He's not talking about a man riding down out of the sky on a pony. It's talking about the sun that rises in the east and shines into the west. It's talking about consciousness, mind. It's talking about human beings. We are at the top of the pinnacle. We are the last of the gods to be created, friends. And if you could understand that ancient teachings and understand that you and I are going to have to figure this out because we are the final, the great plan. We are it. And when we pray, we go within ourselves because we are the temple of the divine. And it is within our most holy place, within us, deep within us, which is that higher consciousness. Because the universe is one and we are one body and we are one with Christ. And we were all in Christ from the founding of the world. One body in union with Christ. And we are heirs, joint heirs with Jesus as the Christ. The one Christ that is going to rule the world. And until we understand that we've got to put aside the entanglements, the little fairy tales. The Apostle Paul says, don't believe these Jewish fables and genealogies of men. What do you think he's talking about? He's saying it doesn't matter what your genealogy is. This is just an illustration. We're all children of the light. And these fables... Doesn't mean they're not true, they're spiritually true, because it's a type and a shadow of reality. The reality is within us, it's the spiritual understanding of Scripture. We don't look at the fable, the fairy tale, and say, oh, that myth about God created the whole universe in six days, that somehow that's literal. Well, you know what? Oh, God could do that if he wanted, Dave. Well, yeah, he could probably. If there was a bearded man floating in, in space, all by himself for eternity, who slapped himself in the head and said, wow, I could have had a V8. Wow, I could create the universe. I've been here for eternity all by myself. I think I'll create, oh, hey, I'll create Jesus. Boom, there you go. And then Jesus and God got to talking, you know, and they're like, you know what, it's kind of lonely up here, just the two of us. Let's create, uh, let's create some angels. How do you like that one? <laughs> What's an angel, Dad? Well, you just wait and see. I'll, I'll get you started here. I'll create a couple angels and then you start doing some. And then, I got another idea, son. Let's create a, a, a world. A what, Dad? A world? What's a world? We're going to create an earth. What's an earth, Dad? Well, you just wait and see. I got some good ideas. And 
Jesus is like, oh yeah, I think, you know, I got some good ideas too, Dad. How about we make them like men and women? That we'll make men and we'll make women and we'll make them suffer for thousands of years. But in the end, I'll go down there and die and I'll save them all. How about that? Oh, that'll be a good plan. Do you think that's really what happened? No, friends. It is a parable about the universe. The seven days of the week is symbolic of the transformation from one thing to another. The progression, the eternal progression of the universe and our learning and growing. And the greatest thing in the universe is the mind. That's the greatest thing. You go anywhere in the universe. So listen, I'm going to do a video um, pretty soon about time. Space and time do not exist. And if you can understand that principle, you will then understand that creation could not have happened because there is no time in space. It doesn't happen in the beginning of time because there was no time. It happens at the beginning of principle. The first principle is that. And out of those principles, we can make this. It's like math. You add two and two and you get four. So, everything in the universe is a concept. Physical reality is something that is a concept in mind. So, consciousness is all there really is. And it's deep scientific truths that even scientists today are now beginning to understand with this quantum physics. But yet, we the peons are still not being allowed to understand this and we're being taught that we got to go into our little churches and sit down in our old pews, file in lock, stock and barrel and sit down and start singing some little hymn to some imaginary big bearded man in the sky and this is going to keep us so stupid that we're going to believe everything they tell us after that. So anyway, friends, I'm going to go ahead and go. I'm going to get this out. And I know I probably offended a lot of you, but friends, we've got to start speaking the truth, whether it's offensive or not, because the truth is going to set us free and only the truth. We cannot stop at just, you know, hearing something that tickles our ears. I'm sorry if I'm not tickling your ears, but I'm telling you the truth. And if any of you say, you know what, I, I've got to admit some of what this guy's saying, it might be true. I need to look into it. Don't shoot the messenger. Look, I may have said things that you don't think is correct. But at least I'm trying to get you to think, to think for yourself and not be a peasant who goes and, 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 and crawls on his hands and knees to the king or the emperor begging for his own life. We got to stop that. We got to start thinking for ourselves. This here is David Bose. I'm going to go ahead and go. I hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you again tomorrow.